Well, good morning. <laughs> it has been a long time. I know, I'm like the worst podcaster. But anyways, I'm here. This is episode number 23 of A Finch's Nest Podcast. My name is Heather and I'm going to be your host today. Um, okay, where should we start? I guess I'll tell you where you can follow me on Instagram. If you're not already following me, you can follow me on Instagram at a finch's nest and that's where I post when I when I do post <laughs> which again isn't very often but I do try so you can follow me at a finch's nest and see what I'm up to um I don't even know the date today it's November 7th and um I'm coming to you from southwestern Ontario where it is a very gray and gloomy day, but a little bit mild for this time of year, which is a nice treat. So we'll take it. So because I haven't podcasted in so long, I have so many things to show you and lots of projects that I'm pretty excited about. And I actually have some acquisitions to show you today. And yeah, I'm like surrounded by all the crafty stuff. So I'm pretty excited about today's podcast. So I'll just give you a quick life update since I last podcast and <laughs> oops. Um, yeah, life's been busy and interesting and fun around here. So since I last podcast, my daughter graduated from high school. So that was exciting and an accomplishment for her. She has special needs. And so where I live, they can stay in high school till they're 21. And so that's what she did. And um, so now we're just trying to navigate what's next for her and what that's going to look like. So that's been taking a lot of my time lately. And um, yeah, so it's, it's just different when there's some special needs involved. And uh, yeah, so we're just working on figuring that out and um, hopefully we'll we'll find something that makes her feel success, successful and productive so yeah that's a bit of a challenge right now um, my son got married in August and if I think of it I'll try to put a photo in here from the wedding um, it was a beautiful very simple wedding and um, yeah it was very exciting and then just mm, was it a week and a half ago my other son got engaged so lots of uh, family stuff going on around here so they're planning or hoping for a spring wedding so we will see uh, how that all comes together I also had a grandson born in June. His name is Levi, and he is an absolute doll. He is honestly the cutest baby. He's just kind of roly-poly, and he has beautiful skin, and oh, he's just so cute. <clears throat> and he's very content, and he's always smiling and giggling. He's just a doll. <laughs> So we're really enjoying him, and uh, yeah, he was born in June at 10 pounds, so he's a big boy, and he's been growing very steadily ever since, so he's got some cute chubby rolls, and he's just a doll and a joy. <clears throat> I also got a new cat. Uh, his name is Tucker, and he is crazy and fun and fitting in well with our other cats so that's life it's been busy and exciting and yeah it's it's cuts into my crafting time I tell you but that's okay um, these are great family milestones so it's been a good year okay so this might be a long podcast because I do have a lot of things I did make some notes so I will have to be looking at them to keep myself on track um, but yeah, let's get into finished objects because there's a lot. <laughs> so some of these I actually borrowed back from my daughter so I could show you because there were things for Levi. But um, yeah, I she gave me one of his sweaters 
to show on the podcast and it was dirty at the time she had just put it in the laundry so I washed it up and I'm sending it back clean so it's a good deal for her <laughs> okay so here we go so before Levi was born I had an inkling that maybe it was a boy and so I thought I wanted to just I was just gonna knit a, a baby boy sweater just in case and uh, my inkling was right and uh, he was born so he was born in June so I didn't really want to do like a a wool sweater for him because I figured he wouldn't get a ton of use out of it. So I found this yarn at Hobby Lobby and it's called Bambootiful. And I thought it was such a nice color for a baby boy. And this yarn is 50% cotton and 50% bamboo. And it's so soft. And it was $5.49 a ball, but I got it 30% off, so very inexpensive, um, but oh, so soft and kind of drapey yarn. So anyways, this is what I used for his sweater. So this is his little sweater that I made, which is the Anchor's Jacket by Petite Knit. Isn't it cute with the pattern on the back? So this is the one that was dirty is now nice and clean yeah so this is just inexpensive Hobby Lobby yarn and I think it worked out really well um, I think I got these buttons at Hobby Lobby too it's kind of cute um, I think oh yes the sweater did call or the pattern did call for buttons all the way down but I I didn't do that I I always find that we only button the top ones anyway so I why do all the buttons? So, and especially for a baby, it just, as long as it's, it's tight at the top, you know, and for the summer, of course, too. So anyways, this is his little jacket. So like I said, it was the Anchor's Jacket. Here's the pattern here. From Petite Knit. I think this is the first Petite Knit pattern I did. She has some really great designs and like very classic, not trendy, you know, designs so and this pattern goes from three to six months to seven to eight years so that's good and I would say it's very gender neutral like if I knit it in a pretty color I could use it for my granddaughters as well so I like patterns like that where you're getting your money's worth out of it um, so I did the three to six month size now I'm wondering since since I've gotten it back I wonder if the if it's oops it's not looking right there there we go I'm wondering if the yarn has stretched a little bit because I feel like it looks a little bit bigger than it did when I first made it so maybe that is part of this yarn with the bamboo I'm not sure but it's very drapey and um, I think it would make for a nice summer top for like myself even <laughs> but anyways it's really nice and soft and it was perfect for a summer baby so yeah so that's the anchors jacket and what else did I want to tell you about that oh yes the the colorway of this one is um, where is it Sarah you I have no idea <laughs> It's right there. Something C. C E R U L E A N C. It's kind of a gray bluish color. So then I also knit the bonnet to go with it, the anchor's bonnet. And this is it. Now, this I definitely feel like it's stretched a little bit, but. Anyways, it looks adorable on him. I've seen him in it a few times and it's just been a nice light weight for the the um, warmer weather. So yeah, and it's still fitting him and he's um, he's four months old, but he's like 18 pounds. <laughs> so anyways, it's growing with him, it seems. So maybe that's the benefit of that yarn. I'm not sure. But anyways, that was a very inexpensive knit which is nice because sometimes we need budget friendly 
And you know, for babies, they don't wear them very long. So sometimes it's nice to have something that is a little less expensive. So yeah, I would highly recommend that yarn for a summer baby sweater. Okay, this is where I have to keep checking my notes because there are some things that I don't actually have that I've given away and I wanted to talk about. So I'm gonna be inserting pictures. So the next thing I made was um, what we call a lovey, just um, my granddaughter, Chloe, she really likes stuffies and loveys. And so my daughter had seen one that was made out of like a double gauze and thought it was really cute. So I tried to recreate it. So I made her a little bunny out of pink double gauze and it turned out really cute and she really likes it. She calls it her new bunny. And even though she's had it for months now, it's still her new bunny. <laughs> so, and she sleeps with it every night, which, you know, when they do that, it just makes all of our making so rewarding, doesn't it? When they, they love the things that we make. So, and it's funny because she knows that grandma makes her lots of things. And one day she was over and she needed some new running shoes. So I took her to the store and, you know, we tried on shoes and I bought her a new pair of running shoes. And so now she, she always talks about her running shoes, but she says, grandma, make them, <laughs> which I'm like, no, grandma didn't make those. Grandma bought those, but it's funny because she thinks, you know, grandma makes everything. So I just need a drink. <laughs> but it's good that they know that their grandma can make things for them. Anyways, I'll put a picture of her lovey and how that turned out. I didn't have a pattern or anything for it. I kind of just made it up as I went along. And I think it turned out pretty cute and she loves it. So that's all that matters. <clears throat> and then the next thing I made was a bunch of receiving blankets for Levi. Because of course, most of my daughter's receiving blankets that she had for the girls were very girly. So I made him some cute little boy receiving blankets. And I think I have a picture that I can put in here. But um, my daughter loves the homemade receiving blankets because the ones you buy in the store are just too small. And she likes to swaddle her babies as long as she can. And she finds that they, they sleep so good when they're all swaddled up. And so <clears throat> generally what I do is, sorry, generally what I do is go to the fabric store and try to buy like a square of fabric. So if the fabric's 50 inches wide, then I want 50 inches long and I just make a big square. And um, you know, they're the easiest thing in the world to make. You just have to hem all the edges and um, she loves them. She just, yeah, she appreciates them and she uses them all the time. And you know, the ones you buy in the store are just so small <laughs> and they're not really good for swaddling babies. So. Anyways, I made her a bunch and I had got some really cute fabric at Hobby Lobby that was a double gauze with little animals on it. It was really cute and um, it was a perfect one for the summer as well because it wasn't quite as warm as like a flannel one, but he does have some flannel ones now for the cooler weather, so they are all set for receiving blankets. And I find receiving blankets, you know, flannel you can always get it on sale and um, it doesn't take a whole lot and it's often what I give for like a baby shower I'll just make them a couple of receiving blankets and anytime I give them to people they love them because they are so big and useful so there you go there's a tip for um, baby shower gifts if you need one and I feel like you can never have too many receiving blankets <laughs> Okay, next is some knitting. I finished a pair of socks. And these ones I don't have a sock blocker for that is this small. So we will just see them like this. So this yarn I've had for a while. And I think somebody gave me this yarn. I can't remember. Um, it's, this is too colorful for me. I would not wear these socks, but I, these are a gift for someone and I think they're perfect for her. I think she'll love them. But um, 
yeah, she likes colorful things more than I do. So I think this is perfect for her. So um, yeah, these will be a gift. And the yarn that I used was this Regia four ply. And like I said, I've had this for a while, so I don't know if this is an older color, but if you like the color, it is 01132. And this is what I have left of those. And then I used for the contrast color, I used the Patton's Croix. It's the off-white color, which I believe is called muslin, which I always have this on hand because it is great for um, heels and toes. It's a very sturdy yarn. And I find with a pattern like this, it kind of breaks it up a little bit, tones it down a little bit. <laughs> so um, yeah, I think it really is a nice accent to these socks. So for these socks, I did 64 stitches and about an inch and a half of ribbing. And then I, I knit down to here about six inches and then my heel flap and gusset and these have a shorter foot than normal and then a nice squishy toe this like you can feel the difference between this yarn and this yarn this is so like dense and sturdy so perfect for heels and toes so yeah so that's a Christmas gift so I'm happy to have those done and happy to have used that yarn. I might knit up some little socks for my granddaughters out of the, the leftovers, but we will see. Okay, next is another pair of socks. I have stuff all around me <laughs> today. <laughs> okay, and I have piles here that I feel like are gonna start falling over. Okay, so this pair of socks is also a gift. And these are on blockers. And these socks are for one of my sons for Christmas. And I love how this yarn knit up. This was gorgeous. Really nice for a man. And then the contrast heels and toes again, which is kind of my my usual. So this yarn is Patton's Croy and the color is Eclipse Stripes. Obviously for the striped part and then this is also a Patton's Croy and it's called Gentry Gray and this is another one that I always, <coughs> sorry, <laughs> always have on hand for heels and toes, especially for the guys. So these, I think, are so nice, and they match. Look at that. <laughs> Almost perfectly they match. <laughs> so anyways, these ones, for the guys, I do 72 stitches, and uh, the same, like an inch and a half for the ribbing, and then the, the leg part, I generally do between five and a half or six inches, and then the big long feet that the men have. So anyways, I love how these turned out. I think he will really like those. My boys love their homemade socks. And then for that, this is all I have left. The men's socks definitely take a lot more yarn. And um, I, I do have some of the Gentry Gray left because like I said, I always have a little stash of it. So it's a perfect color to go with so many of the, the men's socks. Okay, lots of finished objects. It feels so good to have like all these things done. And it's funny because I the other day I made a list of all the things that I, I would like to make as Christmas gifts if I get around to it. And the list was a little longer than I was expecting. <laughs> so I need to get cracking <laughs> if I think I'm gonna get all this stuff done. Maybe it's not so good to make a list. <laughs> Okay, the next sweater is for my little Levi, and I made him a little antler sweater. So I don't know if you'll remember in the last podcast, I had made his sister's little 
pink antler sweaters and hats. So now they're all going to have little antler sweaters. But the color is not showing. It, it is like this. A very, <clears throat> it's a beautiful blue. Beautiful color. Um, yeah, so he's going to have blue and his big sisters have pink. But they all have little antler sweaters. So cute. And this one, I have one of my little labels on it. It says, Handmade with Love by Grandma. So yeah, I'm really happy with how this turned out. And this, <clears throat> I have made so many antler sweaters for my granddaughters. And they just wear them all the time. They, I don't know, they just fit right. And my daughter loves them. And so I just keep making them. <laughs> because <laughs> uh, sometimes you try a new pattern and then it's not quite right or whatever. But she seems to get tons of use out of these. So um yeah, I'm happy to make them. So that's the the Tin Can Knits antler sweater, if you haven't heard of it before. And like, sorry, <clears throat> and like all Tin Can Knits patterns, uh, it goes from zero to six months all the way up to a 4XL. So <clears throat> you definitely get your money's worth out of these Tin Can Knits patterns. And like I said, I don't, I don't even know how many <laughs> of these I've knit for my grandkids. At least, um, at least six of them I've knit. So, and if I had um, like a baby shower to go to and I had the time to knit something, this would be one I would knit as well because this is done in a worsted weight, so it does work up very quickly. So, um, yeah, it's a perfect pattern and it's definitely unisex and yeah. It just seems to be a very usable um, sweater for them. So then I made him the matching hat. Now, I did put pom-poms on the girls' hats, but I decided not to put pom-poms on a pom-pom on his. I thought maybe it looked a little girly with the pom-pom, but I do really love how this hat turned out. I think it's adorable, and I think with his chubby little cheeks <laughs> sticking out it's gonna be so cute um the other thing there's a little bit of yarn left I don't think I brought it in here but I think there's gonna be enough just to knit him a pair of those little mittens with no thumb or anything like baby infant mittens which I think he's gonna need a pair for just wearing in the car seat in the winter so that's what I'm gonna use the the leftovers for us so that was the other thing I was like should I make the pom-pom or the mittens because I only had enough for one or the other so I decided to go with mittens which I haven't knit yet it's on the list <laughs> it's a very long list <laughs> anyways the yarn I used for this was let me see the Barocco vintage which is my favorite yarn for grandbaby knits it is a wool wool and hmm, I don't have any right here it's a mix or maybe I do have one here let me see there might be one in this bag yes here's one okay it is 52% acrylic 40% wool and 8% nylon and it's completely washable and cozy and warm soft and the colors are amazing and I don't know if you can tell because of course the lighting is awful today but yeah I think you can tell the colors are not like a solid color they're kind of heathered which just makes them look a little more I don't know it doesn't it doesn't look like a red heart acrylic yarn. <laughs> I guess that's what I'm trying to say. It has a very unique look and I just love it for baby knits. It's affordable, it's washable, and it's warm and cozy. So that's what we we like. And I don't know if I mentioned, but that hat is the Antler Toque, also by Tin Can Knits. And again, this comes in many sizes. 
And I did, okay, but it comes in a baby size, a child size, an adult small, and an adult large. So I did the baby size for him. So yeah, there's another amazing pattern. And even this hat, I was thinking of making another one in like a lighter blue that would go with his snowsuit. So I might just make it again because it's such a great pattern. Okay, and let's see. Okay, the next is a couple sewing projects. So my granddaughter, Chloe, she turned two at the end of August and her and my other granddaughter are really into playing dress up and being princesses. That's like all day, every day. <laughs> So I had made Annie and Elsa and an Anna costume for her birthday. And so I decided to make one for Chloe for her birthday. So I decided to go with Cinderella. <clears throat> so this is the pattern I used. So it's a Simplicity 1303. And I based it off of this one. I just changed, changed a few little things on it. Um, I did these sleeves instead of these sleeves and I didn't do the overskirt. I just did the, the little peplums that go on the side. But anyways, this is the pattern that I based it off of. So the smallest size was a size three. So she's turning two and she's pretty small for her age, but I was hoping it was just going to be too long, <laughs> but it wasn't. <laughs> so anyways, I made this for her birthday and it was way too big but it fit Annie perfectly. So Annie claimed it. So then I thought, well, I have to make another one because it was supposed to be Chloe's birthday gift. So I did make another one. And so I just had to kind of adjust the pattern to fit her um, because the smallest size was a two. But um, yeah, I just made the bodice quite a bit smaller because I found the bodice even on Annie and Annie's almost four and um, you know, just having said that, I'm like, how can she be almost four? <laughs> Can't be right. She is. Um, she's almost four. And the bodice seemed to be big on her, like just too wide almost. So um, I took the bodice in quite a bit and a lot of length off of it. Um, but anyways, so they both have a Cinderella dress now. So I've made it twice. And I figured, you know, when, when Annie wanted the bigger one, I thought it's probably easier to make a whole new dress than it is to try to alter the dress at this point anyway. So, so now they're both Cinderella's. So then they, they went out for Halloween, both dressed as Cinderella. So that was fun. But, um, I think I have some pictures that I'll put in of the costumes. Yeah, actually I know I do have pictures. So yeah, so that was a fun project and I got the, the like the perfect blue Cinderella blue fabric at Hobby Lobby if you're if you're needing to make a Cinderella dress so anyway so I've used this pattern twice so that was good and patterns are really expensive nowadays so I just wait for them to go on sale and um, recently they were on sale at Joann's for $1.97 so I stocked up on some some more patterns so anyways two Cinderella dresses a size three and then one that's smaller than that and then so my daughter that I was talking about that has special needs she she's learning to sew and she she made herself um, a bunny suit back at Easter and so she wanted to make a costume for Levi for Halloween so I took her to Hobby Lobby and she I just let her pick what she wanted so she wanted to make him this little mouse suit right here so, which turned out cute because in the Cinderella movie, there's um, the little mouse named Gus Gus. So Annie and Chloe were um, Cinderella and he was Gus Gus <laughs> for Halloween. So anyways, my daughter tried to make this and we kind of left it late as we do. And um, we were having problems with the sewing machine that she sews on. Um, I don't really like her using mine just because I can't be without my sewing machine if something happened to it. So um, she, 
she's using another one that we have, but it was giving us so much trouble. And so we ran out of time for her to do it. So I ended up making it for her, but yeah, we made him this little suit. So um, again, I, I have a picture of him in it. So um, we didn't do the little boots because, well, I did one of them and I thought they would fit like a four-year-old, not a baby. So I just didn't even bother. And then um, instead of the pink for the inside of his ears and tummy, we did a baby blue color. So, so he looked really cute and he was toasty warm going out trick-or-treating. So that was, that was a fun project. And we have some really cute pictures of him in that. Okay, I think only one more. Oh, for, for Levi's costume, I did the six month size. Um, and it fit him perfectly, it was great. And he had a sweater and everything underneath, so he was really nice and warm. Um, hmm. I'm wondering, did I tell you the color number for this? Oh uh, dear, I keep forgetting to look at my notes. Okay, if I didn't, this was the Broco Vintage 5187 is this color. Okay, next is a test knit that I did that I am super happy with. So, let's see here. This test knit was for... Maria, uh, yeah, Monska, I think it is, um, Stitched in Sweden is her Instagram name, and this was her pattern design, this is a child sweater, and it's called, oh, now I don't know what it's called, on here, this was the original for the test knit, and it's called the Swedish Spring Sweater, but I'm pretty sure she changed the name now. But anyways, I will I will look that up. And if I'm if it's not the S Swedish Spring Sweater, I'll put what it is called down below here. Um, anyways, it's an adorable color work sweater, and this pattern was really well written. And it goes from sizes one to two years to 10 to 12 years. So again, another pattern with a great big size range, which is great when you're doing kids sweaters because you can, I can knit this many times in different colors and it's like a whole different sweater. <laughs> so yeah, so this was a test knit. And when I saw it, I, signed up right away because I thought it was so cute. So I did the, what size did I do? I think it's a four to six, let's see. Yeah, size C, which is a four to six. And I knit it for Annie. And this is the sweater. Isn't it so cute? Oh, I love it. I love it, love it. And of course, the color work on the back as well. Oh, I love it. I love the colors. It's just so, so nice. So, the yarns that I used. All right here. In a basket. So, the gray is the Barocco Vintage DK. Again, my favorite now. 2106. And that's the gray. And then I used this color, which is the Broco Ultra Wool DK, which is another favorite of mine. And the color is 83153. And I have knit a few items out of this color. It is one of my favorites. And then I used this, which Oh, this is the Barocco uh, Vintage DK, and I don't have the color, but this is the yarn that I used for uh, Annie and Chloe's antler sweaters, and I had this little bit left, so I used this for some of the color work, and I wish I could remember the color. 
they'll come to me in a second I'm sure <laughs> but it's like um, a dusty pink color oh I can't remember anyways um, and then the light pink was the ultra wool decay again in a 8310 and all of these were in my stash actually so that was great I just went stash diving <laughs> And here's another Ultra Wool Decay in color number 8310. So those are all the colors that I used. Oh, and then this gold color, which I'm making something else with it so I can show you it in a minute. Oh, it's so nice. I love it so much. So um, this sweater has like a folded down collar, which she, um, I'm just going to move this out of my way. Um, she has you knit it down, you pick up the stitches and knit it down. But I did that and it, I just didn't like the way it looked. So I took it out and then I just um, hand stitched it down. So I thought it looked much neater this way. So, yeah. Oh, so cute. So this is going to be for Annie for Christmas. So I've decided to knit one for Chloe as well. So Chloe's is going to be a mix of most of the same colors, but the main color will be this one. So um, I was looking everywhere for this yarn online and nobody had it in stock. So I think I've told you before about um, that we have a yarn store in a lady's house, uh, very, very close to me. So she's kind of my, my local yarn store now and um, she'll just order in whatever I need it's so great so I called her to see if she could get this oh yeah no problem so she did she ordered me in I ended up getting five balls of it because I'll only need two to do the sweater but I knew this would be a different dye lot and um, I, I use this color all the time so I thought because I'm asking her to order it in, I would rather buy a larger quantity. So I have five balls and she got it to me within like a week and a half. So I was pretty excited about that. So um, I'm knitting a sweater for Levi right now. And as soon as I'm done that, I'll be casting on her, her sweater. So this will be her main color. And um, then I'll just use some of these other colors. And maybe in this section here, there's like two light pinks and then this darker. So I might do the grays in there and then add a different dark gray, but we'll see. So yeah, so that's for Annie for Christmas. And then I'll have to get going on Chloe's and they'll have somewhat matching sweaters, but not matchy matchy. So, okay, so that's it for my finished objects. How long? Almost 40 minutes. So yeah, this is gonna be a long one. But if it's too long, you can break it up, I guess, and watch it in sections. And I need a drink. <laughs> Did you notice the, the Starbucks cups now for the holidays? Just noticed that this morning. Okay. So now, works in progress. I only have three. So we will start with this one. Um, it's another petite knits. This is the anchor pullover anchor sweater. It's called so similar to the cardigan, only a pullover. And this goes from zero to three months to 10 to 12 years. Another great one. And another gender neutral one. So I am knitting this for Levi. And this is the, I'm using this gold that was in Annie's sweater, which is the Vintage DK again. And the color is 2192. And this is his little sweater so far. <laughs> so I have these. I have this sleeve on some pony pony cord that I just picked up at Michael's and I am working on sleeve number one but 
This is really cute. And it will coordinate oh, with Annie's sweater. <laughs> so they're all going to be sort of coordinated, which I think will be adorable. But yeah, I thought this was a different sort of color for a little boy instead of blue. But I think my daughter will really like it. So this is going together fairly quickly. I love how this pattern, all the increases for the yoke are like hidden in here. So um, yeah, it's a great pattern, super easy. And there's also some, some raglan shaping in here. Yeah, it's a great little pattern. So um, yeah, so that's my Barocco Vintage again. And I should be able to finish that one sleeve tonight and get on to the other sleeve. And that will be done hopefully by the weekend. And that will be another Christmas gift ready to go. So, and that's just in one of my bags that I made a couple years ago. Okay, and next we have another gift. And these have been on my needles for a little bit, so I need to start putting a little more time into these. <laughs> But this is a pair of socks for my son-in-law for Christmas. And this is them. So this is the Lang yarn. And the color is 83.0137. I've had this yarn in my stash for a little bit. So I thought I would use that up. And then it it's one of those yarns that comes with the spool for the heels and toes. And so I added it with this nice blue color. So it give, gave me a bit of a speckly look there, but it will help them be nice and sturdy. So this is only the first sock, so I really need to get cracking on these. So I need to keep these in my car because I find I'm waiting so much like for my kids, dropping them off and picking them up, <clears throat> that I could get a few rows in here and there. So, and then on the weekend when I go to the coffee shop knitting with my friends, I should take these and put a couple hours into them. So, Anyways, yeah. Oh, this color here is the Comfort Sock and Wool. And the color number is 201157. This is a really nice blue color. So that's kind of a, a gray blue again. It looks a little brighter in the screen than it does in person. But yeah, it's a nice sturdy German wool. So yeah, these are just your typical men's sock. 72 stitches. The other thing I forgot to mention about this yarn, um, this laying yarn, is these come in 50 gram. This is not a ball or a skein or a hank. What is this? <laughs> uh, we'll say balls. They come in 50 grams. So if you're going to use these for socks, you need two of these. So just a FYI on that. Because quite often they're, the laying yarns are 100 grams, but those ones are only 50. So, okay. Now I have one more work in progress. And this was another test knit that I did. I did and I didn't complete it on time. <laughs> but that's okay. I actually tested the whole pattern I just didn't finish the length on the body. So I had done all the important things. So the pattern is this. Tutka, Tutka from Caitlin Hunter. And I'm sure this is not what the pattern looks like. This was our test copy. So um, yeah, I'm sure the picture is different. 
but that's the name of that. Oh, and that's by Caitlin Hunter. And I know she did this in a pullover and a cardigan. So I was testing the cardigan. And this pattern calls for, I believe it was a worsted weight yarn. Um, yes, a worsted weight yarn and a four and a half millimeter and a five millimeter needle. So I'm sure there's a better picture on the actual pattern, but this is the only picture I have. So as you can see, there's these eyelet sections all the way through the body and the sleeve. And I didn't want to do these. So I asked if I could leave those out on mine and just do the lace work or the pattern work at the top and eliminate all of this. And they said I could. So if so, it's interesting because if you go onto the um, project pages for this pattern, you will see that other people have done the same thing, which is really helpful because then you can see if you prefer these eyelet sections or you don't. And like for me, I just preferred the more plain look, but everybody's different. So it's nice that there was options and nice that she allowed us to do our preference because then, you know, it probably helped her as well because people can see from the pattern pages what it looks like and to see that there is an option and you don't have to do this. So anyway, so I just did the pattern at the top. So, and because I didn't finish it on time, what I did was, cause I had to take photos and stuff for uh, the deadline, is I put the buttons and everything on it and laid it in such a way that it looked like it was finished. <laughs> so, that's why it already has its buttons on. Now it's all twisted. And let me see. I'll do up the buttons because it's a little easier to see that way. And this is a very, <clears throat> I don't know why my throat is doing this today. Um, this is a very dark color, so I don't know how well it's going to show up. But we will see. Okay. Oh, it's showing up so good. Okay, that makes me happy. So there you go. There is the, sorry about the needles. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Let me put this down. Okay, there is the yoke. Oh, this is showing up so well. I'm so happy. Okay, so there's the eyelet sections you can see. So I just did them in the top and then I did the sleeves. I'm sorry about the needles. I did the sleeves and the body just plain. And as you can see, the body's still not finished. <laughs> uh, that's the boring part. And now that I'm trying to get my Christmas gifts done, I'm like, this can wait. Although I really want to wear this at Christmas because I got this really cute dress from Target of all places. And it's like a gray and black plaid. And I think it would look so nice with this sweater. So um, I have a bit of a... A split stitch there that I'm going to go back and try to fix. So there's no sleeve shaping as you can see. It's just straight down and then it's kind of really tapered at the bottom or really what's the word I want? You do all the decreases right at the end. So it gives it a bit of a balloon sleeve but not not too much. But yeah and then I had I had to use these buttons for my granddaughter's sweater in this um was it in the summer or last Christmas uh, in a smaller size, but I thought they were so pretty. So I went back to see if they came in a bigger size and they did. So I have these really pretty buttons on. Oh, and this is another cardigan where I only put the four buttons at the top. I didn't do the buttons all the way down. And the other thing with the sweater is this band, the button band is knit as you knit the sweater, which is amazing because nobody likes picking up that band, right? So anyways, I am super happy with this. And I really am glad that I didn't do the eyelids in the body. I think it looks nice, especially I think it looks nicer in the pullover maybe, but with a cardigan, like kind of want it to be warm and <laughs> yeah, not full of holes. So 
I didn't do that, but as you can see, I still have um, quite a bit of length. Well, maybe not quite a bit. I'll have to try it on soon. But I just have the length to do and the bottom band. And so the yarn I am using, surprise, surprise, it's Broco Vintage. <laughs> I should be working for this company. Broco Vintage. Color number 5152. And this is another yarn that I got from that lady who has a store in her house. This is a gorgeous color. So rich and beautiful. And I think it's going to look so nice with my dress. So I really want to get it done, but I have to I have to focus on Christmas gifts first. So Anyways, I, d I just have to get the length to where I want it, and then, then I'm done. So that was a great pattern. That's only my second Caitlin Hunter that I've knit. It was perfect. No complaints with the pattern at all. She was great to test for as well. Um, sometimes when you do a test knit, they don't allow you to make modifications, but she did. And I know a few people had chosen not to do the eyelets in the body. So um, I think that was great because, you know, when you're testing something, sometimes, you know, you want it to be catered to how you like it. And sometimes you can't do that when you're testing. So I was really grateful that she allowed us to do that. Um, I'm going to show you some acquisitions right now. Um, I try not to do acquisitions too often. Well, I try not to, <laughs> I try not to acquire too often either, but this fall I, I have acquired, we'll say. Um, I went to Woolstock, which I'll talk about a bit in a second, and um, I did some damage there. So I'm going to show you what I got. And if you don't like acquisitions, you can fast forward a bit and, um, Anyways, this is the first thing I got. Now this was actually a gift. My son and his new wife uh, gave me this yarn for my birthday, which was in September. So they have a really beautiful yarn store where they live. And so they called me one day from the yarn store and they're like, what do you want for your birthday? <laughs> so, so I was like, well, sock yarn's always a good gift. So, and I love the combination of pink and gray, so this is a perfect choice for me. So I'm looking forward to knitting this up, and this is the Lang Super Socks 4-ply. And this color is 901.0389. So I'm sure as soon as the Christmas knitting is done, this will be on my needles, because I'm excited to see how this will work out. And I think it's going to be a pretty sock. Looks like it's going to have some fun patterning in it. So so that was a birthday gift. And the rest of this, I gifted myself. <laughs> so I went to Woolstock this year, which um, for those of you who don't live here, near where I live, it is a, a knitting and fiber event um, in Ontario, in Paris, Ontario. And... Um, since I moved to Southwestern Ontario and I'm part of my knitting group, every year they go to Woolstock together and I haven't been able to go because last year I had just had surgery, I think. I had just had my knee replacement or I was just going to have it and I didn't want to get sick or anything. And the year before I had just had knee surgery. So, so finally a fall with no knee surgery. So that was a treat. Um, so I finally got to go this year and, oh, I'm so happy I went. It was such a great day. And it's, it's so much more fun to go to these events with your friends and especially your fiber friends who understand the, you know, the addiction of, <laughs> of a yarn. So anyways, we went to Woolstock and then we also went to Mary Maxim because they have a big store uh, not far from where the, the fairgrounds were. So between the two, I did quite a bit of damage, <laughs> or at least for me, anyways. Okay, so I'm going to show you what I got. So 
the first booth that I purchased from was Leo and Roxy, which is kind of funny because um, the little red mitten and Leo and Roxy are the same, basically. And they're fairly local to me. And um, yeah, so I don't have to go to a show to see their yarn. But anyways, I purchased from them because they had a whole table of um, their sock yarn. Actually, I don't know if it was only sock yarn. There might have been, yeah, I think there might have been some DK there. That they were just like one-offs or like the just stuff that they were getting rid of. And so they were $20 a skein instead of the normal 30 or whatever. So I couldn't resist. So this is one of the ones that I got. And I don't even know if these ones have names. Well, this one does. This is the quartz, which is an 80-20 sock. So I'm not sure why it was reduced in price, but it's going to make pretty socks. Yeah, and I'm, I'm at the stage now where I have a lot of, like, really patterned socks. And I'd like to have some more, like, tonal or plain socks. So this is perfect. And I did knit... Um, a hat out of the same color before but anyways of course it's pink so it had to come home with me <laughs> and then this one which is a little different for me um let me see if this one has a color name maybe now this one is called a misfit and it's also an 80 20 saw but uh, yeah it's a different different than something i would normally buy but i thought it was really pretty and I think it'll make really gorgeous socks. And the other thing is I knit a lot of socks for gifts. So, you know, if I knit this up and I think, oh, this is better suited for whoever, I'll just give them away. So, but I could see myself wearing these ones. And then this one, again, is not necessarily colors I would normally buy. It's more, um, I'm more into these muted, muted colors. Than this bright but again I knit for a lot of people and oops <laughs> these will be perfect for somebody so again these were $20 and this is also a misfit 80-20 sock so yeah people were buying these up I tell you they even had a bin of I think they were only $10 but they were mostly like really earthy colors which are really not my thing but you know, in hindsight, I probably should have bought some for the men in my life, my son's son-in-law. Anyways, so these were $20 each. So I was happy with that purchase. And then what else did I get? Oh, I got this one from Songbird Fibers, which is gorgeous. <laughs> and... I don't know if you know about Songbird Fibers. She's actually a friend of mine. Um, she, all of her colorways are based on birds. So this one is also based on a bird. The Rosette Spoonbill. So I thought it was pretty with this like orangey color and the pink. And then some neutral in there. So it'll be interesting to see how this knits up. And this is a 80-20 sock yarn. She had a lot of really nice colors. I had a hard time deciding which one to get. But uh, that's the one I chose. And then this was the last one that I bought at Woolstock. And I w after I bought those ones, I was like, okay, that's enough. I don't need to buy any more. <laughs> and then I went to the Richard DeVries booth, which... I, ha I showed great restraint because I only bought one. His, your his colors are really nice. I would have loved to have had like a whole bunch of his minis, but I was trying to, I was trying to be good. But this one I could not resist. It is so nice. And the color name is Heather. <laughs> so it literally had my name written all over it. I had to bring it home. <laughs> it just wouldn't have been right to leave it there, right? <laughs> so, yeah, this is Richard DeVries yarn, colorway Heather, and it's an 80-20. Yeah, 
I will not be giving these ones away. These socks will be staying with me. <laughs> but really, I had to. It had my name on it. <laughs> yeah. If I hadn't if I hadn't noticed the name, I might have been able to leave it behind, but I couldn't. So this one's gorgeous, but I could have bought so many at his booth, but I I was good. So that's what I bought. So five skeins, that's not horrible, right? And the only other thing I bought was this, which I'm excited to try. So this is a mini loom and the company is Chip and Sparrow. So I have not yet yeah, chipandsparrow.com if you're interested in these. So I went, I had seen um, like a mm, Instagram post that was like, oh, these people are coming to Woolstock. And I thought these looked really interesting. And I'm always looking for activities for my daughter, the one that has special needs, because a lot of my job is filling her days. <laughs> so um, if we can find things that, you know, she can work on, projects and stuff that's easy for her to do it's it's a good way to fill her time and be productive and then she can make gifts for people so when I saw these I thought oh that would be such a great thing for her or maybe because I don't know enough about these so I wanted to go and check out their booth and talk to the lady that um, created these things so I went to the booth and she had lots of samples there and she had all different types of looms so she had like little circular ones and she has um like a bookmark one this one uh, i'm trying to remember what else she, she has quite a few anyways and they you can buy them like this with just the loom and the tools or you can actually buy kits with the yarn and everything which i didn't need because i have lots <laughs> um so anyways i talked to her and she was super helpful so I ended up buying the bracelet one for my daughter, which is very similar to this one, only it's long and skinny. And I thought like maybe something like this might be a bit overwhelming for her because it's a, it's not a big project, but it's a bigger project. And, you know, she might get bored of it or overwhelmed with it, where the bracelet one, it's a, like it's quite thin, so it's not a lot of weaving back and forth. And I thought maybe she would enjoy giving them as gifts or, you know, I think you could make a bookmark or like a bracelet with it. So anyways, I bought her one and I've put it away and I'm going to give it to her for Christmas. But I bought myself one so that I can I can learn how to do it first before I give her hers. And if she masters that and wants to try this one, then she can try the bigger one. So um, yeah, so I'm pretty excited about these. I think it's, it's going to be kind of fun. Oh, and then she... I think it was this one or maybe it was the other one yeah it was the other one it's like a long skinny like a bookmark but then at the bottom there's like a small square that you can also make like a little tiny oh um, use it as a little tiny loom so yeah she was the lady was very helpful and then she also gave me this to um to give my daughter so that this will make it easier because you have to have like fine motor skills, which her skill, her fine motor is a little bit delayed. And so she said that this would make it easier for her. So I'm going to put this with hers. But yeah, I just thought this is a neat idea. It's a, you know, most weaving looms are massive <laughs> looms. This is just a nice little project. And um, good way to use up scrap yarn. So I'm anxious to try this, but... Yeah, if you have any questions about these, I would definitely reach out to her. She was very helpful. And she was telling me that some of the samples in her booth, her eight-year-old made them. So I'm pretty confident that my daughter's going to be able to do this. And I just think it's great. I think everybody needs a hobby and something to, to be able to create. So anyways, again, that's chipandsparrow.com. And she had lots of different options. <clears throat> So then on the way home from Woolstock, like I said, we stopped at 
Mary Maxim. And I got this superba, soupy doopy, four ply. And this is a 75, 25. So 75 wool and 25 polyamide. And one of my friends that I was with bought the same one because <laughs> it was such a nice color. Yeah, so I'm anxious to see how these knit up as well. I have knit a pair of Superba socks before and they're actually one of my favorite pairs. So I'm excited to try this one too. <clears throat> so I bought that one. And this is one which is called Suburba Tweed. Oh, did I tell you the color number of this one? This one's color number three. And this one is color 631718. And it's like a pink tweed, which is right up my alley. <laughs> so yeah, I am well stocked on sock yarn. Oh, and then the other thing I bought at Mary Maxim was this, which is, oh dear, the writing is small on this. <clears throat> it's called Lazy Hazy Summer Cotton 50 Gram Ball. Isn't that pretty? So I'm thinking, I bought four of these. I'm thinking it should be enough to make Chloe a little sweater for spring. It's very pretty. So yeah, a little cotton sweater. Nice for her. And that's all I bought. So I think I did pretty good. And then one other thing I did buy recently, not from the show or anything, was this Legacy Fiber Arts. I would say, of all the hand dyers, Legacy Fiber Arts is my favorite. And I think not only do they have the best colors, but they're just really nice people. And I like supporting people like that. <laughs> so, yeah, this is a new color that they came out with. It's Wednesday Adams. It's part of their um, Halloween collection, which, as you can see, is not very Halloween-ish but very pretty. It's not looking, it's more purple in person than it looks blue here, but it's more of a purpley blue. Anyways, I thought this was really pretty. So another pair of socks to make. I also ordered their, mm, the Four Sundays in Advent box, which I've got the last two Christmases. So I have, um, that coming hopefully soon. <laughs> I'm so excited. They actually sent out like I guess they were printing all the shipping labels so then it it shows that there's activity there so I'm excited that the, I'm, I think they were supposed to be in the mail this week sometime so it's gonna be hard to have it and not open it but I will wait but I'm excited about that because their colors are always fantastic. So that's it. I have lots of things that I want to make for Christmas and I'm hoping I can get through them all. Um, I Lately I've been, mm, I haven't had more time on my hands because that never happens, right? But I've been making more time, making more time for making. So um, hopefully I can get more done. I also kind of rearranged my sewing room. This is the room I'm in right now a little bit to make it function a little better. I didn't have enough like storage. So stuff was always kind of sitting in my way and I was constantly having to like move stuff. So I bought a couple um, of those Alex drawers from Ikea. So I have things a little more organized. I also, as you can see, I put the TV on the wall which also helps uh, keep me keep me company as I am sewing so I had that TV in my bedroom and I never watched it so I decided to move it in here so that's fun because I like having the, the news on or whatever when I'm in here working um, the only the other thing I wanted to talk about today was um, I have some bags going in my shop 
and I'm looking over there because I have a big pile of bags that are ready to be photographed and put in. So I'm hoping to get to that today or tomorrow. But I wanted to just show you a few of the ones that are going in. Um, there's definitely more than this, but, um, and these ones aren't all like ironed and pretty yet for the, for the shop, but um, they will be soon. So I do have some of this rifle paper um, Alice in Wonderland fabric, which this is one of my favorite rifle paper fabrics. And for a while there, it was really hard to get it, but um, I did find some. It's, I think it's a little easier to find now, but for a while it was not. So this one has like a navy wax canvas bottom and then the Alice in Wonderland fabric on top and it's a drawstring and then all my drawstring bags have this just neutral lining on them. And then a little handle here. So there's um, a few different styles of this and um, a couple in this fabric. This is another rifle paper that's going in the shop. And this one, as you can see, it needs iron still. <laughs> but um, this is kind of a army green um, wax canvas. And then, of course, the handle and drawstring and the same lining. And I do not put pockets in. I know some people love pockets. Some people don't. I don't, so I don't put them in. <laughs> I have a couple of these little notions pouches. This is also part of the Alice in Wonderland collection. It's like a double zipper pouch. So I have a couple of those. And then this is a new sort of size of bag that I've been doing lately. Um, again, in the rifle paper Alice in Wonderland. Um, I do have some other ones as well that are in this size uh, that I think I have one more rifle paper and then a few different fabrics as well. Um, these are perfect for a sock. Now these ones always have like a coordinating lining in them. They don't have like the plain off-white so this one has a red polka dot because I thought it looked cute with this. And then they have a zipper top. So this is like the perfect little sock bag. So yeah, and then I just put my label on the back. But this is a really cute fabric. So yeah, and then, oh, this little notions pouch as well. I did put a coordinating lining inside. So, and these zippers have like nice big pulls on them, so. I know sometimes with the smaller zippers, like a standard zipper you get at Fabricland, um, I know some people have complained that the, the thing was kind of hard if you have any sort of fine motor issues. So these ones are a little better, bigger and better. So yeah, those will be going in the shop soon. So um, yeah, that's it. I can't believe it's been an hour and 15 minutes. <laughs> But um, my kids are occupied this morning, so today was the perfect day to do it. My day started out with, I had to drop my daughter off somewhere. And then yesterday I had done a grocery order for pickup at 9 o'clock this morning. So after I dropped my daughter off, I forgot that I was supposed to pick up my groceries. So I drove, like, the wrong direction and then realized, oh, shoot, I have groceries I have to pick up. So I turn around and drive back to the other side of town to pick up my groceries only to find out that my order did not go through. <laughs> so <laughs> there's no groceries there for me. So, and I was really frustrated because obviously it was my issue when I was checking out. I guess I didn't do the final step and I should have known, I should have known that it didn't go through because I didn't get the confirmation email but you know, when you're busy, you just don't even think. But um, so I came home and yesterday when I was making, like when I was purchasing all the groceries online, I actually had like my cookbook out and I was like thinking of what I wanted to make this week. And so like I had bought a whole bunch of different things than I would normally buy. And so I was like, oh my gosh, I hope my order is still there. Otherwise I have to do this all over again. So then I came home and I couldn't see my order. And anyways, I ended up finding it and I was able to check out.
for a one o'clock pickup today. So, but I was like, oh, this is how my day's starting. <laughs> oh dear. So anyways, I will still have the groceries that I need for dinner tonight. So I've been trying to try some new recipes and make some different things because I feel like we eat the same things all the time and I'm getting a little tired of it. So this week we're going to have some different food. Okay, well that, that is it. And thanks for joining me today. Um, I, I was toying with the idea of maybe not doing podcasts anymore. I'm not sure. I, I feel like, mm, I feel like I'm always saving everything for the podcast. And so then I have nothing to post on my Instagram. So I was like, should I? just post everything on Instagram as I'm working on it and then skip doing a podcast or I don't know. I'm still toying with it. So we'll see. But um, yeah, just watch Instagram and I'll, I'll update you over there. I like doing the podcast, but then I feel like like with Levi's sweaters and stuff, I had to get them back for my daughter and like lots of things I don't have to show you. Now, if I did it more often, I wouldn't have that problem, I guess. But we all know that that's not going to happen. So, <laughs> Anyways, I hope you're enjoying your making. I will be back before Christmas for sure. I will um, show you what I've made for gifts um, at Christmas. And I'm also going to have Christmas bags coming to the shop. Um, some of them are rifle paper as well. And others are just a really cute uh, Christmas fabric. Um, anything else I need to tell you? I don't think so. Except just follow me on Instagram and you can see what I'm up to over there. Okay. Well, thanks for joining me and I hope you are feeling inspired to go knit. I know after I watch a podcast, I just want to go knit all the things. So, um, yeah, I hope you're well. Take care and I will see you soon.